Welcome to Rosebud Homestead. Boy, fall is here in a hurry with some really cold temperatures this past week. In fact, we were down to nine degrees the other morning. And I know that's not cold compared to some parts of the country, but for us, that is really cold, unseasonably cold. And what this cold fall and then wintry weather brings on is a desire in our family for soup, homemade, delicious, wonderful soup. And today we are going to do butternut squash soup mix. So we'll get right to it. So this week Jim saw butternut squash on sale in the grocery stores and brought home quite a bit of squash so we're probably going to do a couple of videos using butternut squash. We love butternut squash. I kind of grew up on squash, winter squash. My dad grew it and we would do all kinds of things with it. Uh, let me go over the ingredients right here. So for our soup mix we have some raw potatoes, we have some cubed butternut squash, we have onion and celery and then some carrots. Now, the thing about making homemade soup, if you are an experienced soup maker, you know that you can balance the ingredients according to your taste. Now, if you're new at making homemade soups, you may be expecting an exact recipe today, but I would like to encourage you to do just a little bit of experimenting. That's the only way you're gonna find out what your particular family enjoys. And so I'll give approximations, but know that when I make soup like this, I just kind of do it by the seat of my pants because I know the ingredients that we like. I looked at a lot of different recipes online, and this is pretty much a consensus of ingredients that they use. This is what I've always used. But I won't be adding any salt or pepper or any other kind of um, spices at this point because we're just gonna make the mix. And I'll get more detail to you about that in just a minute. First, I thought that I would show you how to prepare the squash and get it from this state into this state right here. So I have a, a T-shaped vegetable peeler that is invaluable when you are going to be peeling butternut squash. This squash is a little bit difficult. I mean, it's just, it's not hard. It just takes some management. So I've removed the stem and I'm going to be peeling long slices like this. And with this peeler, it makes it very, very easy. Um, and you want to peel down, get rid of the whitish stuff until you get to the orange. And sometimes I go around a couple of times in doing this. Now, I love having this soup mix on our shelf uh, so that I can just bring it in and then um, blend it up and add a couple of other ingredients to make the soup. And I'll show you that in a little bit. One of the trade-offs, and you know, in life everything is a trade-off, one of the trade-offs to doing it this way um, is that while it's very convenient to have the soup mix in jars out on your pantry shelf to bring in and do, um, the way we have to prepare it for the canning process means that we do the process of preparing the squash just a little bit differently. Now, if I were going to be doing just soup for supper from scratch, um, in the first place, this would be much too much for just us. But um, I would so far do the very same thing. Peel this squash. Now again, I'm gonna run around again and get the white off as much as I can. Then I would cube it like you saw over in the bowl, ready to go. And then instead of putting it directly in jars for processing and preserving, I would roast it in the oven. And by roasting it in the oven, it brings out just a really lovely flavor. So we'll miss out a little bit on the flavor by doing it this way because we're not gonna roast them ahead of time. Um, but 
you can compensate for that by adding a few other things that I'm going to show you in just a little bit. All right, so this is pretty good. Not perfect, but then we never are. So, get rid of these skins. Now, notice that I have some right here that didn't get peeled, so I'm just going to cut this off. And when I cut squash, I usually always have to go through two or three knives until I find the one that I really like. And this one was the one that I picked for today. And notice we've cut a little bit right into the seed um, place. There's a little round hollow right there, just like all squash and pumpkins that has seeds. So I'm going to put it like this on this board, and then I'm going to try to cut it in half. And I like a long knife so that I can use a rocking motion to cut it in half. Wow, this was actually not too bad, pretty much equal halves. And so this is what it looks like right here. So the next step is to remove the seeds. I'm just going to take a little spoon and scoop out these seeds. Here's a little spot that I'm going to cut out. Another one over here. All right, the next step then is to just cut this in half circles. About an inch to maybe three quarters of an inch all the way down the length of the squash. And again, I like this long knife because I can teeter-totter it. But use whatever knife is comfortable for you. And then once I get these in these half circles, it makes it fairly easy then to just cut it in those chunks. So I'll take about two at a time. And these are between a half inch and an inch. And they're gonna go into the jar just exactly like this. And then I'm gonna add them to my big bowl over here keep doing this. As much as needed until I can get all these things cut. So we'll be back when this squash is all cut into cubes. So the uh, squash is all cubed. I didn't have room to put all of it in this bowl, so I have some in this little um, insert that I'm going to put in just a minute. We are going to then dump in the squash. A couple of stragglers here and the potatoes and they're filled all the way up to here and I'm going to put these in boiling water once the water comes back to a boil then I'm going to boil the squash mix with the potatoes for two minutes the purpose of this is to heat everything all the way through before we put it in the jars and so um, that's what is next and I'm going to put this right over here and we'll be back after these have boiled for a couple of minutes Timer just went off, they've been boiling for two minutes. Um, the jars are hot right out of the dishwasher, so they're ready to go. I have six WEC jars, one liter size, and three ball quart size. So I'm not sure how much this is going to make, but obviously it's gonna take a couple of, of uh, batches of canning to get all of this soup done. So I'm gonna go get the hot vegetables and I'm gonna put them into this larger pan. Okay, here we go. You may have noticed that the potatoes were a little brown when I put them in, but now they're just as white as can be because they've been boiling. Okay. Now, because this is a soup mix, this is all the cooking in advance that I'm going to do. And these things are far from done. So now, I'm going to just add the onion and there's enough heat in those veggies that's going to warm these other veggies 
enough that we can get them in the jars. Now, here are the approximate proportions that I have used so far. Um, I had eight, cup, eight uh, pounds of squash, and then about two pounds of potatoes. So that ratio is four to one of um, squash to potatoes. And then I used about a two, two cups each of the other vegetables. Okay, making sure that these are mixed really well. Ooh, it smells good. It smells just like fall. All right. Now, what is ultimately going to happen is after we have um, the soup mix finished, um, after it's done processing and cooled a little bit, I'm going to bring one quart back in the kitchen and we're going to open it and I'm going to show you how to make the soup um, as if we were opening up a can from our pan, uh, not a can, a jar, as if we were opening up a jar from our pantry and then um, how do we turn this chunky mixture into the smooth, velvety smooth butternut soup that we really like. Okay, so um, here we go with the filling the jars. So, and I want to be sure that I leave enough head space. Probably is pretty good. I have no idea how much this is going to make. The thing about buying a butternut squash and bringing it home is you never know quite how much it's going to yield. And so um, I just, I'd never just um, cube it and then use only a certain amount of cups. I use whatever the yield is on the squash. And then I just adjust the rest of the ingredients from there. When we uh, bring it in and make the soup, we'll be putting it in the blender so that we can um, smooth everything out. And then at that point is when we will be adding our seasonings. And there's a lot of choice on the seasonings that we can use. Some people, which I, this I thought was quite interesting, at this point in time, uh, when they put the mix together like this or when they're making their soup, they will add uh, chunks of Granny Smith apple and that apple adds a really nice, evidently, I haven't ever done it, but adds a nice uh, touch of sweetness to it. And I'm quite intrigued with that. So when we put our soup together a little bit later today, I might add some of our home canned applesauce. I'm still kind of trying to think about that. These are really pretty in the jar. And our first ball jar. But the ball jars don't have as wide an opening, so I am going to use the funnel. Looks like we're going to get about eight. leftovers left. I'm going to redistribute them to some of the emptier jars. And so eight pounds of squash with those proportions makes about eight quarts of soup mix. Now with my wet jars I can only, and these are of course, I interrupt myself all the time. So let me start over again. This is low acid food so of course we're going to be pressure canning. So there we are. The pot is empty. And we have eight quarts. I can only fit five of the WEC jars in my pressure canner. So I'll be doing one batch of five and one batch of three. Okay, now I'm going to need to get a table knife here. I'm going to fill this with broth. Now you can use water, you can use broth. This is a combination of vegetable broth 
and um, chicken broth. I just had some leftover of each that I wanted to use up. All right, now I'm going to finish this with a little water. And it's just fine. Okay. And the ball lids. And we'll put these aside. And now for the wet. Getting things out of the way so you can see. Here are the wet gaskets that have been boiled for a couple of minutes and they're just they're sitting on the stove nice and warm. The jar is, I mean the lid has a little groove right there and I make sure that the gasket is completely flat and then I invert it and because these are going to be pressure canned, I use three clips. Lid is upside down, gasket goes here, inverted, and three clips. And checking that flat gasket is really important. And here's our last one. Almost lost that one. All right, here we are with eight quarts ready to go out to the canner, so I'll meet you right out there. All right, we're out here, and Jim and I have decided we're only going to do four jars at a time, and that will do four for each of two batches. So generally, I don't like to do such small batches, but this time I'm going to because we've got eight quarts. So I'm putting these in the pressure canner, and this will give us some nice space here. One of the things that um, pre-boiling the potatoes and squash does is that it gets rid of a lot of the starch from the squash that I forgot to mention in the kitchen that that water was quite starchy, so that's a good thing. All right, so this water is nice and hot, and I'm also placing these so that the clips are alternating and not touching each other so we won't have... Uh, some of the things that have happened in the past is when I pull out one jar, sometimes the clips grip each other and it has, uh, it's been known to pull off one of the clips and broken the seal. So I wanted to be really sure that that doesn't happen this time. So we are going to be pressure canning these and according to the USDA, we will need to do um, 90 minutes of processing time. And um, the first thing that has to happen is, of course, uh, we have to vent here for 10 minutes and then once that is all vented and the air is out and it's filled with steam on the inside instead of regular air, then we will start our timing. Um, no, then we make sure that it gets up to, at our elevation, we have to do it at 13 pounds pressure, so we always keep it between 13 and 15 and we'll time that for 90 minutes and then we'll let it cool down naturally without any help from me. Um, which I have been known to do previously years ago, which was certainly not the thing to do. And then, um, then we'll bring you back when we're ready to take these out. So we'll see you in a couple of hours or so.
This is about an hour and a half worth of cooling on this. It is still a little bit warm, and I would never ordinarily open a bottle that wasn't completely cold. But this was in our first batch of a butternut squash soup mix. So here is the mix it, it, as it would look on our pantry shelf. So we're just going to pretend like this has been out on our pantry shelf and it's all cold. So um, now I obviously would never have stored the jar with the clips on. I'm not sure that the seal is uh, complete yet, but I'm going to try it. And it is. Notice how down pointing this tab is, so that makes it very nice. Now we had one of our subscribers ask, how do you open WEC jars? I believe that I have opened one, demonstrated that in a previous video, but I'm going to do it this time too. So I put my hand over the top of the jar to study the jar carefully, and then I just pull this tab, and that's all there is to it. Once that tab is pulled out, the lid comes right off. Now, what we are wanting to do is to drain the broth off of this. And there won't be very much here, but we want it all out. At this point, we don't know how, what the consistency of this is going to be. Now, all of the vegetables have been cooked together, so remember that we have squash and potatoes and celery, onions and carrots. So I'm just gonna dump the whole thing right into my blender. Now, um, from here on out, there are lots of choices. So if you like a very smooth soup, like we do, then you want to use the blender. If you want it a little bit chunky, you can perhaps use your blender, but just put it on um, pulse, or you can use your food processor so that it doesn't just liquefy everything. But we like everything smooth and silky, so that's what I'm going to do right here. So we're going to blend everything up together. check the consistency to see if we like that consistency and it might be just a little bit thick so I am going to add I could add the broth back into it and you may do that as well but we like ours just a little bit richer so this is some heavy whipping cream so I'm going to add just a little bit of cream it's going to bring out the flavor Add a little texture. Now I <clears throat> thought about whether or not I wanted to add any apple to it and I decided that I did. So here is some of our applesauce and actually this is from 2016 and so um, it's about three years old now but it's still perfectly fine and it smells delightful. Now in our um, applesauce, I don't put a lot of sugar because the apples out on our tree are really quite sweet, but I do put a little bit of cinnamon and nutmeg, and that's gonna bring out the flavor of the squash as well. So I'm gonna get a spoon here. I'm not gonna take that first spoonful, but I am going to put in a couple of spoonfuls from below that top layer. Let's make it three. And then I'm going to blend again. Okay. So it smells really nice. From this point, I'm going to put it into my pot so that I can heat it up for dinner. And this is exactly what we're going to have for dinner tonight with a little bit of homemade bread that's just out of the oven. All right, 
now comes the tasting part. Because when you make your own soup, this is the point where you start tasting to see what other things you want to add to bring out the flavor. So here's just a little taste. I'm almost gonna say I don't think it needs anything. Oh my goodness, it is so, so rich, so smooth. I don't think it needs anything, and I have not added salt or pepper, and so I'm gonna just hold those at bay, and then um, I'm gonna heat it up, and if we decide a little bit later that we want some salt and pepper, we can add that at the table. So, here is our finished soup, and it is just beautiful. Uh, let me heat it up, and then I'll plate it, and we'll see what it's like at that point. So we'll be back in just a moment. This is just beautiful. And Jim bought me this china, oh, several years ago, and uh, I always use it for fall because of the pretty fall colors, but this soup just is a perfect complement to the china. And the soup is hot and ready. There's a dollop of sour cream, and it's lightly sprinkled with nutmeg. Now, you can also use savory spices as well. A little bit of thyme, for instance, might be really nice, too. So we're going to go ahead and have our dinner. I'm cutting fresh bread here in just a moment, and hope that this has been useful to you. So we were really excited to show you how to make butternut squash soup mix today, and hope you enjoy it. Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.